All right, I'm here. What's up? Today, we are streaming Mullet Mad Jack. This is a uh, part of the Steam Next Fest demos. These are a bunch of games that are coming out soonish. Some maybe next year. But uh, as you see, I, I downloaded a bunch here. I thought about maybe playing a bunch of them in a, in one stream, but having played a bit a bit of Mullet Mad Jack, it it's at least an hour to play through the demo here. So I I, I don't want to you know undercut any of these games here. Um, and Indica. Not to be confused with a, a certain strain of plant, is does not support controller support, and I don't have my keyboard hooked up or a mouse hooked up to my Steam Deck, so that's not going to happen. But Indica looks really interesting, despite the uh, the nuns on the cover. Actually, I would say because of the nuns on the cover, it looks interesting. <laughs> but we're going to do some mullet magic. All right, so this is a uh, as you said, I played about about twenty minutes. It is a, uh, stylistically, it is like 80s anime VHS. It is really cool. I'm going to see if I can start from the beginning of the demo to give you uh, the proper intro here. It, it, it's, it's like a, it's an FPS roguelike that takes place down corridors. Uh, the Steam page said it's like, you know how it suggests games like this. It claimed it's like Neon White, which I love Neon White. I don't quite get the comparison, but I kind of understand in terms of the first person nature of it and the, like the quick levels. But it, apart from that, it's not not very much like Neon White. But um, it, it's cool. The style is cool. I gotta say, like from what I played, the way it looks, the way it sounds, that is what kind of is taking me through it. I'm still not totally convinced on the mechanics they have laid out. I, I, I'm not quite feeling the depth just yet, but there's potential there. As you can see, it's already awesome. Like the <laughs> It's already amazing. This is all amazing. Is it loud enough? Can you all hear it just fine? It is, I, I, I could sit here just watching this. Audio's good, audio's good, no one's complaining. All right. Beautiful, just beautiful. All right. Um, I don't want it to load me where I was. I want to start from the, from the top. Let's see if it brings me there. There we go, let's do this. New game. Oh man, the saxophone. I gotta turn my own. I gotta turn my own volume up. This is. Oh my god, I love it. This is this is me. This is my vibe. This is what I love right here. Everything. All right, let's let's get into it. Uh, let's do normal. As God intended. So it's a really interesting story here. <laughs> Far into the future, man. Oh, I can't even read it now. It goes away. But you Start. need Initializing our live stream like show. a dope hit every 10 seconds because that's where you've, uh, <laughs> where you've gotten to with social media. But it's also at the same time hmm. in the past. So they're looking for the perfect person to live stream <laughs> to hit these... these this dopamine hits, and it's me. You will enter live stream shortly. Today's prize? These amazing sneakers. Today's mission? To rescue the influencer princess from the robot scum. <laughs> She's got two billion followers, you know. And the first moderator to rescue her on live stream wins the prize. We'll try and her location. 
right now, she's... Alex saying, already this is amazing. I, it is. The aesthetics, sound, music, the whole visual style. Beautiful. Howard, you're finishing up Persona 3 already? I'm like 17 hours in. If I, uh... If I had more time, be further. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. I love it. I need the soundtrack. All right, so you shoot stuff is what you do. You'll see. I guess you start by punching stuff. That gives you health, kicking a... One of those uh, drink machines gives you health. You can slide, dash, pick people into stuff. What the hell? Literally, millions of you are watching. We're putting the audience's love into your bloodstream. Your blood feels the sweet, sweet flavor of those lights. <laughs> you now have 10 seconds of life. For every kill, the audience will give you more time to live. But if you bore the audience not killing anything, they will let you die after 10 seconds. Ready? Go moderate these damn robots! So, having played, maybe this changes. As I said, I, I played 20 minutes. From what I have played, it all takes place indoors. If there was, maybe, I hope, they can go outdoors. And uh, I don't mind the corridor aspect of it, but it, it feels a little claustrophobic while playing, as much as I love the aesthetics of it. I uh, hope the environments change a little bit. But possibly not because you're in this building, at least <laughs> that seems to be the point of this this whole stage. Here goes the first floor. Good luck. You have ten seconds. Destroy these damn robots. Absurd. <laughs> this game is absurd. These robots definitely bleed a lot. So after each stage or so, I guess after each floor, you get to choose an upgrade. Uh, pistol level two, double the damage. 
mugshot or sorry nut shot bonus <laughs> shoot your enemies in the crotch all right gives an extra second bonus i'm at a, i'll have a hard time adjusting to that since i always just aim for the head so i'm not going to go with that amount of extra magazine bullets up to 25 percent um let's just double the damage I guess I was too slow. <laughs> Every 10 seconds. All right. I do wonder if at some point this sort of wears thin. Fire sword. Wait, wait. Fire sword. Fire sword. Has anyone played Cloud Punk? I th think I have. Is that the side scroller that's like sort of similar, sort of 80s vibe? Don't remember. No, I don't think I have. There's a few of these games that look so sort of similar, but no, I haven't played that one. All right, Fire Sword, it is. Peace Corp wishes you a good day. Ready. Oh shit! I just screwed up. That's when he was there. I believe there's a run button, but I feel like there should be. Oh, L2? That's the problem. It gets a little, a little bit hectic, for sure. It also, I think it's, I think it's setting me back, but the levels appear to be randomly generated, so it's not all that noticeable. Oh! 
What the hell? Go down. say items at longer distances See you later Like this is a a video game ass video game This is just completely off the wall insane there's no equivalent of this in any other medium. Be a little spoiler warning. Not really a spoiler, but in case I make it to the, I think it was the tenth floor. So I, I initially played through uh, on easy to see what it was about. So I just kind of like ran through it. And when you make it to the tenth tenth floor, she's like, "Oh, she's on a different floor. <laughs> you have to keep going." So I think that's going to be sort of the the ongoing joke is every time you make it to where this person you're saving is supposed to be, she's not not actually there, and she's now on the twentieth floor, or the thirtieth floor. And it'll just keep going. But as I said, I do hope the 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 environments vary a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Exploding ammo, maybe. Sure. Hard to even know the hell's going on, honestly. Like, I know if you're watching this, you're probably wondering, like, what's going on? I don't even really know what's going on. I'm just, I'm running through. I'm just running through. L2 is run. R2 is shoot. And that's kind of what I'm doing. And whatever, hap whatever happens on screen happens. Shotgun 2. I like the shotgun. Uh, Shadow says, I just joined, have no idea what's going on. So this is an 80s anime VHS inspired game. 
where it is a first person shooter. And as you see, it is sort of a, a roguelite. And uh, after every level, you choose upgrades and you keep going. And you basically have to kill somebody every 10 seconds or the level ends. And you are you are part of a live stream. So they are live streaming me, you know, in, in the narrative of this game. And uh, I am their money maker. Double jump. Always get the double jump. Every time. That was a little too fast. Uh, the bit I always I, I know this I, I say this every time, but I always forget how to say your name. The biz, the biz. I so I'm 84 hours into Persona 3 Reload, and I'm still not done. So good luck. That it sounds like you're doing everything. From what I'm reading, the game shouldn't be more than like 80 hours. Persona 5 for me, the original, not uh, Royal, was 105 hours. I'm kind of glad I didn't play um, Royal. This 120 hours is just too much. I did not mean to grab the Uzi, but I have it, so whatever. Yeah, but my Persona 3 Reload, I'm not sure I'm going to do my Persona Reload, my Persona Playthrough. I'm not sure I'll try to 100% it. Like, I'll I'll enjoy it to the fullest. But, uh... I don't know. I mean, we'll see that... So far, it feels like, the, from what I'm playing in the game, I don't... Like, I'm not missing anything. There are no things I'm avoiding that I'm doing. Uh-oh. It's stuck there. There we go. Fast slide. Oh yeah, maxing the social links. I figured it would take more than one playthrough to to finish that anyways. I mean, there are only so many days in the calendar. What does even happen? My monitor went out, so that was distracting me. This monitor keeps going out over here. I did it again. I assume it's not affecting the stream. It's just a bizarre, bizarre thing that just started happening today. So, did it again. It's gonna keep doing it. No, I did not mean to get this.
wishes you a good day. Why is this saying floor one floor? Am I back at the beginning? God. <laughs> so what what are all your impressions just based on watching this? Would you want to play this? I'm just curious. Some people saying yes. Fox says, looks like fun. Stan, definitely interested. Bad Lefty says, uh, yeah, probably. All right, cool. cool. I think it looks pretty, I, I mean, the greatest thing for the, about this game for me so far is, is really the aesthetic. It's, it's the visuals, the music, the whole vibe. I, I hope there is a little more depth to what's going on here than just running down the same hallways, shooting people. Um, like, for example, if you've played Neon White, which I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of depth to Neon White. Like, to the level, the level design is kind of what takes the cake there. This sort of lacks, not sort of, it lacks in the level design category. You're kind of just going down hallways. There isn't much traversal, really. Like, if you added platforming to this, or some kind of traversal, like Neon White, with the this, this same aesthetic, then uh, I could see there being a little more depth. There's a guide to 100% Persona 3 Reload, and it's since I played Persona 3 Portable, I decided why not. That makes sense. If you already played one of the original ones, then I, I get wanting to just do like a full playthrough.
toxic smell. Your manliness weakens everything that dares to touch you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Must have shot all around his head like it was a. Uh... What movie is that? Naked Bullet. There's a movie where a guy's shooting someone and shoots like all around him. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess in typical roguelike fashion, fashion you start at the beginning after dying. But all the levels are randomly generated, so it's all like... I'm not really... too concerned. Naked gun. I said naked bullet. Yeah, naked gun. That's what it is. Naked bullet. <laughs> um. Bow piercing. See you later. Have I played Neon Abyss? No. Neon Abyss. No, I have not. 94% uh, like this video game, according to Google. 9 out of 10 on Steam. I know I've, I've seen this art, this cover art. I just haven't played this. Um, run and gun action. Deep roguelike mechanics. I'll see if it's on uh if it's on like PlayStation Plus. I can check it out. But there's also there's there's too many games out right now. There's too many games. I am like Persona 3 Reload is my my main focus at the moment. Um I'm also nearing the end of the Tekken 2 story which it's like an hour and a half long, but I've been playing it in little bursts. 
And uh, what else is out? I played a bit of Foam Stars just to kind of like unwind. That so that game's not getting good reviews, and I understand why. God damn. I understand why it's not getting good reviews, Foam Stars. That said, the more I play it, the more it's like, oh, I, I get it. Like it's it's growing on me a little bit. It's still fun. Especially because it was free on PlayStation Plus. But it's it's not a terrible game. It's it's a solid like six out of ten, which is kind of what it's getting in reviews. But Helldivers 2 looks really good. Um, the only issue with that is I don't really have any friends that play online games. And I hear that game is really good with friends. So there's no point. <laughs> there's no point in me playing it. I have no friends. So uh, that's unfortunate. But it's fine because... Um... Oh, wait, am I missing things here? You can open upgrade... Yes, grace window. But are there permanent upgrades? That's what I want to know about. Okay. But the, the rest of this month, I'm sure there's more coming out that I would play. I'm trying to kind of ignore the release schedule because uh, I want to get through Persona and then Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out. Stuck on environment. On environmental pieces. There's like a plant there. In. Oh, don't wait until you're a cold corpse. Spend hot money now. Does Mike Figueredo not play online games? I don't I'm sure he does some. Um if he if he had hell divers and wanted to play, I'd probably grab it. But I'm not sure he plays hell divers. Nut shot bonus. I had that pop up before, but I don't shoot at the crotch, so it's not useful. Speed boost is actually exactly what I need. Thank you. As if this game isn't fast enough. Their run is very vital to win to, to finishing these stages. The issue is when you hit run, it goes so fast that it's hard to even discern what's going on on screen. That's the run. It just goes glass forward. And it's what has led to me getting stuck in some geometry.
Sam, I have not played Helldivers 2, so I got no thoughts. It looks nice, looks fun, sounds fun. I could, uh... I haven't played a good third-person shooter for a while. I don't know why there aren't more third-person shooters. That is a <laughs> powerful shotgun. I will give them credit that the uh, weapons do feel powerful. Like, they feel substantial. Crazy. Speed boost. <laughs> Thank you. Sea Dog on Twitch asks thoughts on Pal World. I played, I think, twenty minutes through uh, Game Pass, and I thought to myself, "Why am I playing this and not Prince of Persia?" So I stopped playing, and then I played Prince of Persia, and I beat Prince of Persia. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, fantastic game, by the way, absolutely fantastic game. Uh, I don't know why you'd play Pal World instead of that, but. If you enjoy Pal World, I'm not going to take away from you. That's that's fine. You can enjoy that. It's not my thing. I, I After, you know, five minutes and ten minutes of, like, punching sticks or picking up sticks, and that's just not... <laughs> so I, I don't... If survival games aren't for me. I don't really get the appeal when I could just play something that is not that. But, you know, at the same time, like... Certain genres are for certain people. I used to not like JRPGs until I until it clicked for me. So, I totally understand not being into something. Uh, explosive ammo chance? No. Kick and shoot after kicking your enemy. On okay, sure, I'll do that. Stop this Pal World slander. <laughs> Pal World has enough love. I think it needs to be taken down a few notches. I'm not saying it's. A, I'm sure it's well developed, a well developed survival game. It's just not, I'm not into those. Now, I like. That there's a double jump, I'm still trying to understand where I'm supposed to use it. <laughs> because I'm not... I mean, maybe there are like secret parts of these levels that I'm missing completely. But I haven't seen the need to really double jump anywhere. Die. Okay. 
I made it just in time. <laughs> okay. Yes, extra seconds of life up to one second. See you later. Almost nearing floor 10. That is where this uh, person I'm rescuing is apparently held up. One more. Billionaire killed. All right. Sorry, Robo Billionaire. That's that's what I'm fighting against. So. <laughs> this is what I was talking about earlier. This is going to be the whole pull of the game. I'm sure she is. My mullet rank is Disco Vice. Need a playlist. It's got anime Doom slash Quake vibes. I wouldn't really call it Doom Quake. There, there's proper exploration in those games. There's no real exploration here. You're just going down hallways in this game. But in terms of, uh, you know, a bit of the visuals, the technical visuals, I, I can see that comparison. Choose a permanent power. All right. Uh, shop refresher? No. Last upgrade keeper? Keep your last upgrade into your new life. That's not a bad one. Weapon upgrade. Make weapon upgrades available of... Uh, yeah, let's do level three upgrades. Sure. I gotta set a timer because I gotta be out of here at a certain. No, I'm not ready. One second. I'm surprised how much. It's been almost an hour already. Wow. Did uh not expect that. 
I guess that's a good sign for a good game. Okay, so when I initially played through, this is where I stopped. I do not know what is beyond chapter two. This building looks like it just keeps going. I don't think she'll be on the 10th floor. You have 10 seconds. Or I should say the 20th floor. <laughs> Thank you. So up to this point, I didn't really get the why there was health because I like health pickups because I didn't notice me dying. That wasn't really the issue. But now that there's uh, hazards, that part is beginning to make a little more sense. So I have to assume they're going to continue building out the environments that way. You know, introduce hazards. Maybe, maybe some kind of platforming at some point since there is a double jump, even though there's no real use for it yet. Yeah, like right, I'm, I am dying. Oh, your body remains are property of Peace Corporation. <laughs> Sorry. I'm noticing. Anyone else notice this? A lot of games now are very anti-capitalist, and I have to imagine that is at least partly influenced by all of the layoffs that have been going on in the industry for quite a while, and and how underpaid a lot of these developers are compared to their corporate bosses. So, you know, a lot of these, especially these indie games start off because someone was, was laid off from a larger company and they're like, fuck these people, I'm gonna start my own, my own developer or my own publisher or publisher developer and publish an indie title. And uh, they introduce a lot of these anti-billionaire, like this one has robo-billionaires. Uh, I am now the, the property of this corporation. There's definitely a lot of... It's not even subtle. It's it's heavy-handed anti-capitalist message. And I'm totally on board for it. I think it's great. Use L2 to bulldoze enemies using a shield. Oh. I haven't even got the shield yet. Okay. this freaking acid.
Let me through. No, it was right there. I hear working in game dev is really cutthroat. I mean, you could just look at the amount of layoffs that there have been. been. There, there aren't enough jobs to take in the amount of people that have been laid off from the games industry over the past couple of years. So, unless you're willing as a developer to not get paid for a while while you get your own project off the ground, uh, and, and willing as in like if you're able to, many are, many would be willing to if they could afford to live and do that, but most can't. But unless you're willing to do that, since a lot of the a lot of the VC money has dried up as well, since I mean, look at the state of the industry. So. You know, a lot of these developers are in tough positions where they have to just sort of bet on themselves and hope that they can make it through, develop some kind of, you know, a demo or something to, to attract uh, investment money or just do it on their own until they can find a publishing license or, or hope they get one. And again, that's tough considering the landscape, considering how many games there are. There are a lot, like looking at the Steam Next Fest demos, there, there are a lot of demos out there. And a lot of the games are really good from what I'm reading, from what I'm I'm watching. Uh, I downloaded like five or six of them, and it's it can be hard to stand out when there is so much creativity, so much uh, you know effort being put into a lot of these releases. There's only so much time in the day that people have. So it, it even if you have a great game or a great idea, and you have like you know a good. A working example of what your game's going to be, it still can be tough to become successful just because of the amount of uh, competition there is out there. Uh, Empty says, I think everyone is getting tired of capitalism now, man. My girlfriend is in law school, has a job as a law clerk, and makes 15 bucks an hour. Shit is ridiculous. Yeah, that is ridiculous. The first, the first taste of that that I had is when I came out of college. I, I went to college for uh, like broadcast production. And my first job was working at the biggest news station in Canada, CTV News. And the year that I became, so I first became an intern. And that was like, a, I think, two months internship. And then that turned into like a, a freelance job. But the year that I joined that company was the year that they dropped starting pay. Starting pay as a video editor in, in we're talking about like national news. This is again, the, one of the biggest, if not the biggest news station at, in Canada at the time. The starting pay used to be 25 bucks an hour, which is acceptable starting pay for the work. The year I joined, the starting pay was 17 bucks an hour. They dropped starting pay almost $10. Like cost of living didn't go down by 10, by, by $10 an hour, but paid it so that was my first taste of like wow we are getting screwed the, the a person that joined this company a year before i did or maybe just a few months before i did because I, I started at the beginning of uh i think it was 2010 someone that joined the company in, in 2009 in like december doing the same job as me making 10 bucks more or almost 10 bucks more an hour for the same job that i'm doing now and that e was disheartening immediately like the 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 morale that that you get hit with like the the uh or i should say the the lack of morale you have for, for your position for your job when you hear something like that it's just like oh my god i don't want to be here like it's it's just it's inherently frustrating and especially because like to get to where i was working it was like a 40 minute drive through like terrible toronto traffic it was just a pain in the ass to get there then i get there and, and the other part of it was was it was freelance, so you had to be on call all the time. And if you turn, say if they call you and they need you for a shift that day, and you can't because say it's like your grandma's birthday or something, you can't go. You're now put down at the bottom of the list. So next time you need a shift, they're not gonna they're not gonna call you. They'll call you if if they get to you if everyone else before you rejects it. It's, so it was just an ongoing. It was this nature. This competitive like a uh, scenario that you're put into where 
You felt like you had to accept every time you were called for a position or called for a shift, because if you didn't, then you'd be looked over. Which also means you, you, you can't have a life. Like, you can't plan things. You can't plan anything. Because if you, have, if you make plans, you might get called for a shift. So I was so happy to leave that job when I finally... I ended up getting a, a job in, in video game marketing for a major PC company um, and worked there where... So, <laughs> this is another story. You're all here for these stories that I don't tell on my, on my main channel. So there you go. You get some insight. I, so I used to work for AMD. AMD is like NVIDIA's, NVIDIA's competitor. NVIDIA now is you know, a, the, the, domin, the dominator in PC graphics compared to where it was like 15 years ago. It was more 50-50. But um, so I was hired at AMD in, in marketing. And when I, like, when I first started, it was like a dream come true. Like working in video games, talking about video games all day, it was amazing. Uh, but eventually like, the job begins to wear on you because it is at the end of the day marketing and <laughs> it's just not, you know, the whole job is to sell people shit, sometimes shit they don't need. So it's just, that can be very draining. But what was even more draining is I got laid off, not once, but twice. I got laid off twice at the same company, <laughs> which... But the second time I was laid off, I was almost like, all right, I, I didn't care anymore. It was like, of course, of course I'm being laid off. But it was just like, it was comical because they hired me back after they laid me off the first time. The only reason I was laid off the first time was because they had mass layoffs and they were just kind of like cutting entire you know, departments. So I was just caught in that. And my boss was angry because he was the only one in my in our division. So once they could hire me back, they did. And then I think it was like a year later, I was laid off again, <laughs> more mass, mass layoffs. But at that point I was like done. I was like, I, I was sort of over the job anyway, so it was fine. But, and luckily I lived at home still. So, or, or did I, no, I didn't. I didn't live at home. Actually, I had, I had to move home. So I, I, I was living at a, at a house with like three other guys in Toronto. And that was a fun time. Let me tell you, <laughs> if you want you want to enjoy your 20s live with other people it's it's great it's worth it even with some of the stuff that you know makes it frustrating at times but um so yeah i was laid off and then i had to move back home after that and that's when i started that's when i ran for the green party and then i started uh doing video i, I think i launched the rational national that year or the year after because i was tr i was trying to do more more like um freelance video work and that was also a pain in the ass because if you work in video like video production you are also underpaid for the amount of work you do and it's similar to working at like a broadcast station it's you know it's underpaid hours are shit uh so i wasn't making a whole lot doing that um but i i, I made my way and luckily i kind of fell into doing youtube so i enjoy doing it and it just sort of caught on uh, Lux Progressive, how do you like being a full-time content creator? You're actually someone I look to as an example that you can do it. I'm trying to start a YouTube channel. I'm a software engineer and they just laid off 15% of my company. I am very sorry to hear that. I know how demoralizing that could be. Um, I enjoy being a full-time content creator. The The issue is you need a, you need support around you. I was lucky that I was able to live at home, you know, until I was 30. So, and not, to be clear, I moved... I moved out and back home like three or four times because of my work situation. But luckily I had parents who were accepting of me living at home. So uh, I did that until I could finally get out for good. But unless you have that, it's very hard to do this full time. You also need to find your niche, like find what you're into and what you're passionate about and don't, don't try and like chase, you know, algorithms or whatever that that you know you may find success doing that it's possible but you're not going to find fulfillment at least i know i wouldn't so you i would stick to, to doing what you enjoy doing do it as a hobby first don't do it with the intent of making it full time do it as a hot like do it because you enjoy doing it and if you enjoy doing it people will feel that you enjoy doing it and you'll be able to grow an audience because people will appreciate that you know, whatever it is that you do but definitely find 
find your niche and, and you know, experiment. You're not going to start out. Like, if you go back and watch my first YouTube video on the Rational National, oh, my God. Don't go back and watch it. <laughs> it's just terrible. But, like, you, you find your way. You keep doing it. You become consistent. Consistency is definitely key. Like, be consistent. Like, right now, I'm trying to grow this gaming channel. And you know, I have 500,000 followers on my on my other on my political channel. I have like 5k subscribers on this channel on YouTube. Uh, Twitch is Twitch more active today? I, I'm usually not. No, there's nine people watching on Twitch. So like, <laughs> I, I'm someone who is experienced in doing this, you know, kind of work. And it's really tough for me to kind of grow, to, to try and grow an audience because this is not, you know, this is not where I started. But I am because I enjoy doing this. I don't care. If there's two people watching, I don't care if I'm the only person streaming. I'm going to stream a game because I'm going to play the game anyways. I might as well stream it and talk about it. So I will do that. And if people end up here and they subscribe and they follow, cool. If they don't, that's just how it is. There's no guarantees. Um, Lux also asks, thank you. I'm doing leftist politics slash news as well, but my style is more casually talking than trying to come off like a professional anchor or something. Yeah, that's like... Do whatever you're pa again. Do whatever you're passionate about. I would, since you, you are uh, your software engineer, I would consider I don't know trying to integrate that somehow into what you do. Like, don't run away from your expertise if you can utilize it in a way that that makes you stand out. Also, my monitor is now officially dead, so I have. This is gonna be a problem <laughs> because I have no idea. If I'm still streaming properly. Oh, now it's popped up again. Okay, I gotta move this window. Oh, Jesus Christ. It keeps going out. Alright, what's happening here? I have to find my window. Slide it over. Let's pop up again. Okay. Um. There it is. Oh my god. Okay, forget it. This monitor is just, I think, officially fucked now. I'll find a way to end the stream at some point. But what was I saying? Um, yeah, integrate what your in, what your expertise is into what you do. Like, find a way to stand out. Uh, what else? Mr. Spock, have you thought of starting your own political party? No. <laughs> There's no. There's no. I have zero interest in that. And if I had interest in that, I would know better than to try and do that. The, that's not really a feasible thing. I, I know enough about politics to know that you cannot do that and be successful. In or you cannot make that party successful. The Green Party in Canada has been around forever, forever, and. They have two seats right now, I think. Two. So there's just... No. And I'm talking about Canada, by the way. The U.S. Also, Green Party's been around forever. There's no Green Party anybody. At least in, you know, Congress. So you have to understand how the political process works. And just... Until that changes, there is no chance. David P says, do you play Modern Warfare Warzone? No, I do not. I played a bit when it came out, when it first came out, like a few years ago. Uh, Call of Duty is just, it's, I, I, I have nothing against it. It's just not me. Mr. Spock says, your last few videos are really good. Oh, thank you. Alex says, you're still awesome, David, for what you do, or for what you did, and could see how you would not want any part of it. Yes. Um, let's see here. I'm liking this background tone by the background music. It's nice. <laughs> very, very moody. Uh, BCZ4R, whatever that may spell, says, do you think people watch on YouTube now or has it always been YouTube? 
Do you think more people watch on YouTube now or has it always been YouTube? I mean, I think more people watch YouTube generally because there are more people on Earth who are old enough to be on YouTube and watching. But um, do you mean in comparison to Twitch? I don't know. I think the YouTube audience is it's always growing, but the algorithms are also always changing, making it harder for new people to to get noticed. Do you do shorts for Rational Nationals? Asks Josh. I did one last week. And, uh... Actually, I did a TikTok. So, I did a... Well, it's a short, but I also put it on TikTok. On TikTok, it's like 2 million views. And I was stunned. <laughs> did not expect 2 million. On YouTube, it's like 10,000 views. YouTube is absolutely deprioritizing independent political channels and have they've been doing it for a while but they've been doing it even to a greater degree recently uh and that to me is a great example of that the fact that i have like three videos on tiktok the fact that the video which i gotta say it, it's a good video like it's it's engaging it's easy to understand it's it explains something um the fact that tiktok was that video even though it's my fourth video was able to be that successful on tiktok while not on YouTube, kind of shows you where YouTube is at. Like, not that TikTok is perfect. I know TikTok has its own problems, but um, it's just amazing. It was able to to get that much attention. Josh says he didn't get it. I don't think you're getting most of my stuff. Most people, I get, I still get messages from people saying I haven't seen, I haven't seen you in a while, and it's like. My videos keep going up. The problem is you're not seeing them because YouTube is not putting in the, in the algorithm for you. Even if you follow me, which is why you got to hit the bell notification icon on YouTube to be notified. That does work. If you hit that and hit all notifications, then you will always be notified. If I go live or if a video goes up, that should tell you. But apart from that, yeah, it's hard. Okay, this monitor appears to be working so i'm gonna i'm gonna probably get off now before it stops working again uh one more question says lux or asks lux for your videos when you show quotes slash videos do you have obs scenes set up that you're prepared to transition to or any recommendations for seamlessly switching while recording i'm finding trying to record to be so stressful uh obs is a great place to start i use um i use yeah i use well I use OBS or Streamlabs OBS. I used to use uh, Wirecast, but uh, yeah. And when it comes to tabs, I mean, or when it comes to scenes, when I'm showing stuff on screen, like if it's full screen, that's editing afterwards. I edit in Final Cut. So if I have like a full page of text, I'll, a I'll afterwards, I'll put that text on my screen, full screen. Otherwise, it's just whatever I'm reading out of the tab and I show the tab of my, my browser. All right, thank you all for showing up. Uh, if you're on the YouTube channel, well, if you're if you're on Twitch as well, make sure you follow me on Twitch. Um, but if you happen to be on YouTube as well, youtubecom slash the Rational National. Let me link that in. Uh, or not, sorry, slash David Dole. The Rational National is. You don't have to subscribe there. I have enough subs. <laughs> or you can, if you want the little content, you can subscribe there too. But I'm trying to grow the the uh, gaming channel which is my personal channel. So there's the link for the Twitch audience to the YouTube channel. Hit subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified. And uh, I, I'm doing pretty regular streams, like at least one or two a week on here. And I'm usually streaming something different. So today it's this, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but sometime this week, maybe Friday, it'll be something else. But uh, there, that's Mullet Mad Jack. Mullet Mad Jack. Check it out on Steam. It's a free demo during Steam Next Fest, which I still, I believe is still going on because I downloaded some demos today. So unless the cutoff was while I was streaming, it should still be up. But uh, go check that out. Casey is sad. 
Casey just got here and is sad that I'm leaving. I'm sorry, Casey. Make sure you subscribe, though. Follow me. All right. I'm going to go, assuming this monitor does not screw up on me. All right. Bye, everybody.